Hey guys, we are an adventure with Nick and Rachel and we bring you the best places to hike and explore in the southeast and more. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because we bring you weekly videos just like this. Today we are in the Linville Gorge Wilderness Area and we are hiking to Table Rock Mountain via the Spencer Ridge Trail. It's a four mile out and back trail um, and you get 1,358 feet in elevation gain. So let's go check it out. So we are getting ready to do our opener and this truck was coming down and he like whipped it in here and like hopped out and he's got like a bear box on the back. So apparently bear season opened um, this past week and he was like, hauling butt up this trail to go get this bear um because he knows the bear's coming down the river that we're actually going to be crossing on this trail so maybe we'll see him get a bear <laughs> maybe <laughs> So this guy just, like Rachel was saying, gets out of his car and starts running down this trail with the 30-30 and a pistol on his side. Apparently it's bear season, so me and Rachel are going to be making quite a bit more noise on these trails, letting hunters know because we're out in the... And I'm dressed like a little baby bear. <laughs> National <laughs> forest or whatever. I ain't trying to get shot. Now, some people can be, there's hunting accidents every year, but... So we just need to make ourselves known that we're hikers and we're on a trail. I didn't think it was bear season or we would have wore some bright colored clothes. Yeah. So I guess that's another thing we need to be paying attention to when we're out here on the trail this time of year from now on. Here's a dog. He's probably alerting to a bear. He probably found it. Yeah, so that means. Be on the lookout for him with. Well, if. Yeah, there it goes again. Mm -hmm. If that dude shoots a bear, or there's hunters all out here. We've seen tra cars all over the sides of the road, people camping. So if he shoots a bear, we need to be listening because if you hear like a bulldozer run into the woods, that means he either missed the shot or he wounded the bear and they're gonna be running in the way and if we're caught in the path of a wounded bear <laughs> no way man I, like i'm just we need to be really careful and just keep our uh you know wits about us and just be paying attention to what's going on you'll hear a bear running yeah. from a mile away but well, i was telling rachel um we need to start doing more hikes in the national forest because um there's no one out here i mean it's like we're used to going to like the smokies and doing national parks and like really popular hikes but these trails out in the national forest we've been on this trail for an hour and we haven't seen a single person size that hunter and he wasn't hiking so um yeah these uh these areas are a lot less populated but they're harder to get to usually the roads ain't maintained as well and uh the trails aren't maintained the trails ain't really as maintained as well, but the, the trail maps can be kind of off or wonky sometimes that we've found out. And um, like the GPS, there's really ever, like hardly ever any signal out in the National Forest. So you have to really be on your P's and Q's when you come out here and do these types of hikes or whatever. You have to have like a paper map. We learned that the hard way last time. So, Mrs. Bear, or it went the other direction. So he's going, that bear, he said he's headed to Hawkbill Trail, which is the trail we're doing next, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got a team of people out here hunting this bear. 
They got walkie talkies. Dogs. dogs. He chased this dude. Like, we're probably a mile in right now. That old guy is like, what, 60? It is 60s easy. Yeah. A really nice old man. Mm -hmm. um, talked to us both times when he got out of the car when he's chasing the bear. He stopped yeah. to talk to us and he talked to us there for a second. But kind of reminds me of my papa. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, he. Uh, he radioed up, he radioed up to his team, and he's like, he's headed over to Hawksbill Mountain. <laughs> so now he's running back up the hill to go chase his bear to another trailhead. <laughs> So I'm guessing on this loop, this would be considered campsite one because it's the first one we've seen anyway. But look at this area. This is insane. It's all open. You got a nice fire ring here. There's a space. I don't know how many people are allowed to camp in one area, but I mean, that's, I don't know. I have to look, but you do have to have a permit like we were saying before, but this area is awesome. I'm so glad we like came up here and checked it out. Now I know uh, for sure that if I want to go camping, like do some back like woods camping, mm -hmm. it's definitely going to be high on my list. This is what I was referring to earlier about the trails not being as maintained. So we've had a decent little elevation gain here in the last quarter mile or so. It's going straight uphill and got this whole entire tree laying across the trail. <laughs> so it's just one of the things you have to deal with in the national forest. Those are some kind of puffball mushroom. Usually when they start out, I don't know about the ones that grow on logs, but the ones on the ground, a lot of them are edible. Don't go eating unless you know what you're doing, but um, Actually not right now. when they dry out, that's how they release their spores. Um, you touch them and they fly the away. Process. But so basically um, whenever they're good, they're white and you cut them down the middle. There's also some false puff, puffball mushrooms, but when you cut the ones down the middle I'm talking about, they're white all the way through with a nice um, squishy texture. And once they start being not edible, they start looking like that and black in the middle and then they start releasing their spores. So that's just the process of their life cycle. That's the end of it. Um, the trail kind of opened up a little and there was a rock to the side and it gives you this really just amazing view of the mountains there's still so many beautiful colors mm -hmm. so we didn't quite miss peak season or it's like right after but there's still some beautiful trees it's beautiful. so peaceful up here So we came down a little narrow trail off the trail. I'll pin this on our All Trails map. So if you guys want to see this little area, I'll have it pinned in our All Trails. If you're All Trails Pro member, you can download our route. But where Rachel's standing is like a straight drop off. Rachel, will you point at that fire ring? There's a fire ring right there on the ground. And this is the view from this campsite and it is insane. 
I mean, look at that. You want to hike back up here and go camping? Yeah. But it gets cold. It might, but bring the right gear. Well, uh, gosh, imagine like all the stars. Yeah, I know. It would be so pretty. I'm coming back for sure. And I'm going to show my friends this. See if they want to hike up here too. Go camping for like two nights or something. Maybe backpack this trail, different campsites. So we stopped to take a break to get a snack, but we realized we didn't pack any snacks. <laughs> we left them all in the car, so I guess we're gonna starve for the rest of this hike. We got our water, but we'll be all right. But um, Rachel brought out that get out gear trek chair yeah. for this overlook. Man, how comfortable are you? I'm very comfortable. I could sit right here all day. <laughs> if I had a sandwich, I could sit right here all day. Oh yeah. This is such a great view. I don't even want to leave. Mm -mm. I know we got to because we had other hikes planned, but I just want to chill. Mm -hmm. Straight down. <laughs> Both ways, ain't it? Uh -huh. Every way, nothing's gone forever. Wow, man, that's like a thousand foot drop. <laughs> it's just so pretty. I like to come up here with like a book and just read. Yeah. Like backpack a book up here and just read the whole book while you're out here on this ledge. And maybe like an outdoor wilderness kind of book. David's talking about the craftiness and the beautiful handwork of God. That's what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Like his creation is just so beautiful. Yeah, it's a lot. Thank you, Google. <laughs> <laughs> the GPS signal is lost. <laughs> We definitely gotta do some more exploring in this gorge. This place is awesome. Is that a river that's running through the center? I feel like I can hear it, but it also like so when you're so far away from a river, sometimes it sounds like wind just rushing through. Like, because this is I'm guessing this is just the, the whole gorge right here and just keeps on going for however many miles. I'm not sure, but but this wilderness area is uh it's massive. It just keeps on going and going. The further it goes out, the different shades of blue you see. It is so pretty. I think it's Psalms 148. What's it say? Praise the Lord. Please praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of fire. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let him praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hell, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let him praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His glory is above all the earth and heaven. And he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. Well, it's thankful that we get to do as much as we do. Not a lot of people get the, the chance to go out and see a lot of stuff like this. So I'm thankful for that. I think we still pounded out most of the elevation. We're probably at about a thousand feet of elevation gained now. Mm -hmm. So not too much more. And then it's a loop back to the car. Yep. And the yes, we are so hungry. And a pizza lunch box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have reached the summit of Cable Rock and you get 360 degree views. I think I'm at the highest point right now. 
It is incredible up here. This was an amazing hike. It was pretty tough because it's that elevation gain. You're just going straight up. Um, and I was breathing pretty heavy. The views up here are so worth that climb because you get a 360 degree view of all of these mountains. It's such a beautiful day. It's so clear. Yeah, we love this hike. If you guys enjoy this hike, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. We look forward to seeing you on our next adventure. There's a fighter jet flying through the... Look, look, look. There might be another one coming. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh my God, it's so freaking cool. <laughs> They're flying through the valley. There he goes. That is so cool, man. I've never seen that before. I wonder if that's like a regular thing they do to practice. He's way out there. I don't know if you can see him, but you can sure hear him. They're like chasing each other, like doing barrel rolls and stuff through the through the gorge. Here comes another, here comes another one. Where's he at? I don't even see this one. There he is, he's down low, like really low. 